Um, so I, I wrote down uh, yesterday evening, anything of value requires work. And why not? It absolutely should. Let me get back into, because I know you want to see more of me. Yeah. Um, anything, anything that you do that's, that's, that's worthwhile, that produces money, had better require some work on your part. Do not spend your time looking for magic solutions. Realize anything that you buy into is going to require you to get off your butt and create value for others. Because that's what money is. Money is a store of value. Ah, okay. So you, you, money isn't just this magic thing uh, that you get. Well, well, unless you inherit it or, or you get it through the lottery, which is, well... Those are good topics for uh, video blogs. I'll probably have some rants about those. Uh, well, that's what it is. I, you can't, I mean, and it all goes back to, you know, before we had money, the idea was that I, I, I do something that helps you and you do something that helps me. Maybe I'm really good at fixing roofs and you're really good at cooking. And so I fix your roof and you might make me meals for a month. Who knows? Uh, but... A direct trade like that is really hard to do. So if the magic of money was that we could store our hard work and effort into a form that we could trade with anybody. And it's sort of this shared mythology that the money has value. Well, the money has value because someone had to go work to get it. And, and originally, all money was you know, actually scarce metals because you had to use something that is scarce in order to keep from people from doing things like, um, well, there's a great line in uh, one of Douglas Adams' books uh, who wrote The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The, these, uh, a, an entire planet gets rid of its useless population by shipping them off into giant space arcs to another planet. And so there's like telephone sanitizers and and uh, and hairdressers and uh, well basically you know uh, lawyers and <laughs> people that are uh, that are really really not providing a whole lot of value to society. And when they crash land, the first thing they do, uh, oh yeah, I bet there's a bunch of HR people in there too. Sorry, HR guys, not a fan. So I know some of you guys do some great work, but I'm a bit jaded right now. All right. So they crash land on this um, on this new pl uh, planet. I think I think the old planet was called Golga Finchin or something like that. And anyway, so the, the, all the useless people crash land on the planet, and the first thing they start doing is having meetings. And they meet, and they decide, well, you know what? We're going to adopt the leaf as a central currency. What? Well, why don't we use leaves as money? Well, because there's so darn many of them. And the joke that Douglas Adams made was, yeah, I, yeah, we got a big inflation problem right now and because uh, the going rate of our currency is something like two deciduous forests buying you a loaf of bread or something like that, which was I thought was a great joke. Uh, so, yeah, you can't just print money, <coughs> government, and have it mean something. Money is valuable because it represents someone's work. Someone at some point in the past did something for someone else and got money in exchange for it. That's the value of money. And so I, I want to really instill this idea in myself and, and others because not only because it goes even deeper than that money is supposed to be a convenience for us so that we can spread our value more easily through throughout uh, the rest of the world if you just make money out of thin air what are you doing and it's that's part of the reason why trading is very 
borderline on whether it creates value or not. Now, it definitely does. Because people need to be able to trade to get to the thing that they want. But the point of trading is not to click a button and then go drink five beers and uh, spend a bunch of money on hookers and blow. You're not doing anybody any favors then. Well, except for the drug dealers and, and hookers. <laughs> All right. I got a little shady there, sorry. But look, it, money has to represent value. And so you shouldn't feel bad about getting money as long as you are providing a valuable service to someone else. That's the key. If you create value, then you deserve all the money you can get. If you do not, you don't deserve any money at all. Money should be a tool that rewards the hardworking. And the hardworking can decide that those who are unable to work, unable to work, we can feel good about helping them. For those that are unwilling to work, we don't help them when we give them money other than keeping them from starving and then hoping that maybe one day they turn it around. But if the money just keeps on coming and they're happy just sitting around waiting for their biological clock to tick for the last telomere on that one cancerous cell to drop off to end their time on this planet, then they unfortunately are not deserving of receiving value and that's the harsh reality of it and it's why there is so much suffering in the world I believe because you have to overcome the demon in you that makes you want to sit around and do whatever you can to drip dopamine into this thing to feel good about yourself that's what alcohol does it's a cheap path to happiness. And thank God you pay a price for it the next day, or else we might have so many people that don't do anything except wire themselves up to the alcohol dopamine drip. It's a sad thing to happen. So one last rant about money, and then I'll shut it down. When the government prints it, it does not create value. It just makes all the money that's already out there worth less. Government prints money. Your money becomes less valuable. And you know what? The government gets the full benefit of the printing by selling bonds or even more nefariously through this huge chain that they have going through the Fed where they control interest rates. Because an interest rate is basically set based on the availability of money. Because if you give someone a loan, you're saying, here's some resources, and because I've built up the store of value, I can give you some resources so that you can spread that around to the people that you need. And in return, I expect that you give me even more value out of the thing that you built with the money I lent you. That's what interest is. So... You can't just manipulate an interest rate like our governments do. It's completely backwards. It doesn't provide stability. It's a security blanket. It makes us feel like the government is looking over us and smarter people are protecting us. No, they're not. Inflation is an insidious thing that robs money right out of your pocket while you sleep every single day. And I'll leave you with this quote from the great Milton Friedman, who was a professor of economics at the University of Chicago. And Friedman said, and I'm paraphrasing, 
inflation is first and always a monetary phenomenon. Phenomena. That means that if you print more money, then each little each dollar that is remaining and now in the supply is worth less and less. And you see it every day. Let me let me. I'll, I'm, I'm going to put this one last picture up because it's a stark stark reminder of how. Our world has changed in just a few decades. Yeah, let me make sure you can see it. Yeah. You see that guy? Can we zoom in a bit? Let that picture sink in for a little bit. There's no reason for prices to be any higher than this right now. The only reason the price is higher is because there's more money floating around. That's it. And the more money that floats around, the easier it is for the government to get the full benefit every time they, they print because it takes time for the inflation to trickle through the rest of the economy. The government gets the full benefit of the money printing. It gets to go do that program that makes the politicians look like they're doing us all such great good. But can you imagine buying a Big Mac for 65 cents? How much better off would we be if we didn't have people fiddling with how we interact with each other? People that think they know better than us. No one person is smart enough to say that they know better than every other single person on this planet. And that's what governments do. All right. You got a little bit of the wild and crazy Carl today. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll talk to you all next time. Bye-bye.